Thiago Alves beat Patrick Cote, but that wasn't necessarily the story. The story was that right afterwards, Patrick Cote took off his gloves, put him in the middle of the cage, and announced his retirement from the sport. A great career, a Canadian MMA pioneer, fought for the belt against Anderson Silva, has had many great moments in the UFC and out. And we wanted to talk to him about that decision and where he goes from here. He joins us on the phone right now. Patrick, how are you? Hey, I'm pretty good, thanks. Appreciate you coming on, Patrick. Um, when did you know that that was going to be your last fight? Um, I'll say like a couple of months ago, maybe two or three months, not two months ago. Uh, you know, during the training camp, uh, I've been uh, I've been injured a couple a couple of time and. Uh, you know, I get uh, I get a bit tired about it. You know, I get a little bit tired to go to the gym. You know, fire training, uh, training with pain and all those things. And uh, you know, I always said that uh, I didn't want that to want to to to, to make the one too many fights. And uh, you know, before um, before it's too late, I think it's that was a smart move to to retire now. You know, I still uh, still giving good performance. And uh, I think with the last performance, even if I didn't win, you know, I gave a good show, so the people will remember that as. Uh, as my style, like the last 15 years. What would have happened if you knocked him out in 60 seconds? Do you do you still think you would have retired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My decision, the my decision was uh, was made uh, before. You know, that's 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 what I said. You know, I did I didn't take this the decision on, on emotion about the loss. Uh, you know, I knew it two months before that, that, that will be my last fight, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I'm tired, you know, the 15 years of doing that, you know, I was a little bit tired and I always say that the, when, uh, when I will wake up one day and, uh, I, I don't want to go in the gym anymore or something like that, or it's hard for me to go to the gym to train for a fight, I will stop because it's, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not worth it. And I uh, it did happen to me maybe a couple of times during that training camp. So that was uh, that was a wake up call for me. We've seen recently Uriah Faber, Brad Pickett, guys say before the fight, this is my last fight. You didn't say that. You were keeping your cards very close to your vest. In fact, even on Wednesday when I spoke to you, I was talking to you about some of the fighters that you have fought in the past who retired and you're still around fighting and, and, and thriving. You never mentioned it. Why did you decide to keep this a secret? Because I didn't want to make a big story about it. Uh, I wanted to focus about that fight. I wanted people to to watch that fight uh, just just because it was another fight. You know, I didn't want to. Even my wife didn't know, uh, wow. and I did that on purpose because uh, I think I wanted to do that for myself. You know, that was the first fight. I was very selfish about it, and uh, you know, I gave 15 years of my life for uh, in this sport, and that was only Fabio, my my head coach. He, he knew it, and that that's it. My other two other corner men didn't know. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, that, that I did that on purpose because I didn't want to make some interviews before about my last fight and doing some of the big deals before, uh, I wanted to go there and do and fight and just fight like uh, another fight. And for me, just, you know, live the moment alone, you know, just live the moment with, with myself. And I knew it, that it would be my last walking, that I knew it, that it would be my last entrance songs, my last introduction by, by Bruce Buffer. And, uh, you know, I have no regrets, regrets about it. You know, I, I did, I did that for myself and, uh, it, it's good, man. So even, you know, you're lying down at the end of a hard training camp or training day, you know, a few weeks ago, you're with your wife, you're relaxing at home. You were never tempted to tell her what was on your mind? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I wanted to tell to kind of uh, like uh, everybody one day, but at, at one time, but uh no, you know what? I I didn't want to talk about it. You know, I knew that it will it, it's gonna it will come, but I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to have big discussion about it. I didn't I didn't want it to be you know uh, out of focus, just talking about about that. So um, you know, I kept that for myself. I just say it to to my head coach because uh, because you know I'm here. I'm with him since more than ten years. So uh, I wanted to live that w with him, but uh, that's it. You know, he's he's been very respectful about it. He didn't he didn't talk to uh, to anybody about it too. And uh, like I said, I have no regrets. I think I did the the right thing. And as far as the week went in in uh, Buffalo, were you a little more you know sentimental, nostalgic? I mean, I saw you at the the Canadian Sabres game, so it seemed like you were trying to take it in. But were you thinking like, oh man, this is my last win? Did you feel like you were getting a little emotional about it all? And maybe that's why you didn't want to talk about it, so that those emotions weren't even greater going into the fight. 
Not really. Seriously, uh, this is uh, no because I took that, that decision a long time ago. So I was just enjoying the, the fight week, and the fight week was one of the the most easier of me the entire uh, in my entire career. You know, the, the weight cut was very very easy, and uh, you know everything went so well in that so that week. Uh, and just the, the only thing got wrong that that I lost the fight, but. Uh, you know, I, I did enjoy it every day of that last fight week, and that was that was great. In a nutshell, why do you think you lost the fight? Um, I, man, I I lost speed. You know, <laughs> he got more accurate. Uh, he was uh, faster than me. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, I thought that was uh, had an advantage about the power and I uh, had a better boxing, but. You know what? The, the the speed is not there anymore, and uh, you know I've been dropped in my last two fights. That something didn't happen in my last 15 years of, of career. So that's another wake up call too. You know, uh, just just to leave before getting injured seriously, and uh, you know I have to be smarter in the sport, and uh, th that's it. You know, uh, it's, it's there's there's a time that you have to realize that. All right, it's you have to, to to put your pride on the side and just be realistic about yourself. And I'm okay with that. I'm in peace with that decision. And uh, like I said, you know, I I, I prepare my after career for for a couple of years now, so it's not easy, but it, it's easier to to uh, to pass to another chapter. You have been a part of the UFC for quite some time, uh, 12 and a half years to be exact. Of course, famously, you fought Tito Ortiz in, in your debut back in 2004, and you've, you've been a big part of the sport, especially in Canada, for so long. Afterwards, did anyone from the UFC, perhaps even Dana White, speak to you? Did you talk to anyone? Thank you. Anything like that? Oh yeah, almost everybody came to me after uh, after my fight to to, to shook my hand and uh, a lot of people from from Fox to a lot of people from television, a lot of people from from the organization to I uh, receive uh, you know a, a text message from Joe Silva too. So that's wow. you know that's that's awesome. And uh, the thing is too, it's, it's the crowd over there. You know, the crowd just gave me a stand up ovation when when I left the, the, the octagon and that wasn't unexpected. You know, that that wasn't in Canada, that wasn't in, in US and you know the the fans gave me a stand up ovation. That was uh that was very uh, very nice. And um uh, after that I just man I I still I, I'm still answering some message on my, my social media. I received uh, <laughs> so many messages that a very nice message and uh you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody for, for their support. It, that was that was an amazing 15 years, like I said, and I have no regrets. And uh, you know, I'm happy that I took that decision at the right time. What did Dana say to you? Oh, he just say he just say that uh, good luck with the with the future. He always respect me, and uh, and that's it. You know, that wasn't a big. Uh, a little big discussion, but you know what? It, 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 it is what it is. You know, it is my boss. You know, he's not my friend. Right. Uh, he was actually. He was my boss. Huh. He's not my friend. But you know, at the same time, I have no shy about uh, about my career. I always, I always try to give the best performance as possible, the good show as possible. And uh, you know what? Maybe except one fight, I have no regrets at all about my my entire UFC career. So you say no regrets. How about? the best moment when you look back, is there a moment that sticks out above the rest? I, I had so many moments in the, in that cage, you know, my first fight in UFC is, you know, I, I don't think it can be better, be, be bigger than that. In my first fight in UFC main event against Tito Ortiz, a the poster boy, you know, even after um, 13 years in that business, they're still talking about it when they present myself. So uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is pretty crazy, and of course, the, you know my title fight. You know that's the dream of every uh, every MMA fighter. I think so to, uh, to to fight for the UFC title fight, uh, and and uh, you know this is this is this is this is the thing that I'm very proud of. It you know nobody will be never able to to take that uh, out of me. So this is. Uh, you know, I had a nice run, and uh, I'm really happy about my career. But now it's time to to pass to another thing. But when I ask you about two best moments, you mentioned two losses, no wins. <laughs> oh, the wins, yeah, for sure. You know, the Kendall Kendall Grove, Drew McFedrys, 
uh, you know, all those, all those things, you know, the, 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 the win against, against Ben Sunder was really nice too, because I was able to show that I was improving my, a lot of my game. I wasn't uh, just a brawler anymore. And I was more a jujitsu guy and something like that. So, uh, but you know what, for me, it's, it's not about the win or the loss, you know, it's, it's, it's always about, uh, you know, the, the what I was feeling in, in the, in that fight and in, in those fights. And, um, Unfortunately, you know, my two best moments, it's, it's a loss, but you know what? It, that was the best thing happened to me to loss against Tito Ortiz like that, you know, because I don't think if I was winning against Tito at that time, I will have, uh, I will have that, the, the career that I had. Mm, wow, that is interesting. Um, so now I know that you do TV work for uh, LDS in, in, in Quebec. Is that what you're going to focus on and or do you have other plans post fighting now? I'm working a lot in media here on my RDS and uh, on radio. Uh, I have a couple of uh, other TV projects on the table too. Um, a real estate company, you know, I'm, I'm working a lot on, on that too. And uh, working with the Canadian Army about uh, putting a program about teaching the close combat, uh, close combat uh, fighting. And I'm working with the, the, the Canadian uh, Olympic uh, organization too about uh, helping the, the new athletes to, uh, to grow. Wow, um, I'm pretty busy. Yeah, I'm pretty busy guy. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's like that since a couple of years, and uh, still uh, now I'm looking back, and I'm still I still have a hard time to believe that I was able to train full time to 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 fight at that level, but now I will focus my uh, all my energy to uh, to all those projects. Wow, that is great. And also, you're a new father, so you can spend some time with your daughter as well, right? That's the best thing ever. Yeah. I know that is the best. Um, thank you for everything, Patrick. You've always been so great to me personally, and you've been uh, such a big part of Canadian MMA. If you're wondering, my favorite Patrick Cote moment that happened back at UFC 86. I remember that was a big card. You fought Ricardo Almeida, and we all thought you win this fight, you'll get a title shot. And this was before I was an MMA journalist, and I remember being so proud that someone from Montreal was going to then fight for the belt, not named George St. Pierre, of course. So uh, that was a really cool moment. I remember watching it with a bunch of friends, and uh, we were all very, very excited for you. So thank you for everything. Thank you for being such a class act and for representing the country so well. And congratulations on a phenomenal career. Uh, I'm happy you have no regrets because I don't think you should have any. Thank you very much, Ariel. Thank you very, very much. And to everybody who listened to you, thank you for the support for all those years. And uh, you know what? I had an amazing career, and I'm really happy that I, I did it. But now I'm in peace with my, my decision. Great stuff. Thank you, Patrick. We'll talk to you soon. All the best, and congrats again. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, there he is. The Predator, Patrick Cote of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, calling it quits. After a tremendous career, he leaves with a 23 and 11 professional record debuted way back when in 2002 made his UFC debut at UFC 50 October of 2004 and on Saturday April 8th 2017 against Thiago Alves he says goodbye but he is going to be around in the sport of MMA for quite some time as you heard and if you're a fan in Quebec you can hear him doing a great great work on television he is the guy as far as color analysts are concerned for French Canadian television. So phenomenal stuff there and really a great ambassador for uh, the Great White North. Thank you very much to Patrick Cote.